Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to take a look at error one more time today, and we're going to take a look at the difference between our alternating series error and our Lagrange error bound. Now, we already know that for an alternating series, if the terms are going plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, and they are decreasing in magnitude, I'm going to add this. This is going to be eventually decreasing in magnitude. Sometimes the first two terms will be equal to each other, but eventually they have to be getting smaller as you go through the series and have a limit of zero, then we know the series converges and it has some specific sum. Now if we want to approximate the sum, we'll have to stop at some term, five or six terms or three terms, whatever we decide. If we stop there, then we know that we have an error. And our error statement is going to be the error is less than the absolute value of the first omitted term. This is a rather easy error statement. So let's take a practice, or take a look at one here. So I've got a Taylor series about x equals two converges to f of x for all x in the interval of convergence and I've got a formula to find the nth derivatives at 2. This is going to give me, a, I can find the first derivative of 2, the second derivative of 2, the tenth derivative of 2 by plugging 1, 2, or 10 or whichever derivative I want into this formula and that will give me the derivative and I've got a starting point so we're going to write the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2. Now our general form for a second degree Taylor polynomial center to 2 is going to equal f of 2 plus f prime of 2 times x minus 2 and there's one more term and that's f double prime of 2 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared so that's my general form so we need to find some pieces of information f of 2 is given to us as 1 third but I don't have f prime of 2 I just have a formula to find f prime of 2 and I don't have f double prime but I have a formula so off we go the first derivative at 2 is going to be found by plugging the number 1 in for n into this formula so that's going to equal negative 1 to the first over 3 to the first which is negative 1 third our second derivative at 2 can be found by plugging 2 in for n of this formula and so I'm going to have negative 1 squared over 3 squared which is going to equal 1 ninth so my second degree Taylor polynomial is going to look like this it's going to equal f of 2 which is 1 third then plus f prime of 2 which is actually negative one-third. I'm just going to turn this into a minus one-third x minus two and then plus f double prime of two which was one-ninth over two factorial times x minus two squared. So we just built the second degree Taylor polynomial there. Now we have to show that the second degree Taylor polynomial, I didn't mean to pull that up, the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2 approximates f of 3 with an error less than 0 0.01. So let's go ahead and approximate f of 3. We're going to say f of 3 is approximately equal to the second degree Taylor polynomial at 3, which would equal 1 third, we're going to plug 3 in for all these x's, so it's 1 third minus if we plug in 3 for this x I get 3 minus 2 which is just 1 so that second term is just 1 third and then my third term if I plug in 3 for this x I get 3 minus 2 which is 1 1 squared is just 1 so that becomes 1 18th now if again this is going to be an alternating series because of my negative 1 to the n and this is that example where the first two terms aren't really decreasing in magnitude but every term after that is going to be decreasing in magnitude because of our powers of 3 and so that's my approximation and that is equal to 1 18th so what we would say here is we are going to have an alternating series whose terms are getting smaller decreasing in magnitude eventually we don't have to add the limit eventually but we can just say terms decreasing in magnitude the limit as n approaches infinity of the a sub n is obviously zero because I've got negative one to the n over three to the n. These are going to zero. My derivatives were like that anyway. And so my error is going to be less than the first omitted term. Now the first omitted term would be the third derivative at two over three factorial times three minus two cubed. That would, that would have been our next term here if we would have gone to the next term. So the third derivative at 2 
is going to equal, oh, and by the way, this is absolute value. And so that's going to equal negative 1 over 27. I plugged 2 into that formula up there. I'm sorry, I did not plug 2 in that formula. I plugged in 3 because we wanted the third derivative. 2 was the center. Excuse me. We plugged 3 into the derivative formula up there. And then 3 to the third was 27. And negative 1 cubed or is negative 1. And this is all over 3 factorial times 1 cubed which is going to equal 1 over 27 times 6 which is equal to 1 over if you multiply that out you get 100 6 times 20 is 120 6 times 7 is 42 add those together you get 162 and so that is my error right there that's a that's an error bound which is smaller than 1 one hundredth so I have shown that that second degree Taylor polynomial would approximate it with an error less than 1 one hundredth. All right, let's take a look at this funny looking thing here. I've got, this is a little easier to write the Taylor polynomial because they've given or calculated all of the derivatives for us. And then they gave me something weird. They've given me the graph of the fourth derivative of f. This is just the graph of the fourth derivative and it's increasing on two to three. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is find the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals two. So I'm not going to write the notation out this time. I'm just going to completely write it out with the pieces of information since they've already given it to me. So p sub 3 of x is going to equal f of 2, which is going to be 4, and then plus f prime of 2, which is minus 1 third, and then times x minus 2, and then minus, I've got 1 fifth as my second derivative at 2, over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared and then plus 3 sevenths over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. So there is the third degree Taylor polynomial just by plugging those into our general form. Then it says use your answer to part a to estimate the value of f of 2.8. So p sub 3 of 2.8 is going to give me an approximation for f of 2.8. There's no way I can find f of 2.8 unless I know what f of x is, and I don't. But I'm going to say that the Taylor polynomial is going to be close to that. So p sub 3 of 2.8 is found by plugging 2.8 in for all of those x's. So that's going to equal 4 minus 1 third times. 2.8 minus 2 is just 0.8 and then minus one-fifth, just drop the five down with the two, and that becomes one-tenth point eight squared, and then drop the seven down with this three factorial, and it becomes seven times six, or 42, and then that's times point eight cubed. And from the calculator, this equals 3.7059. So that's what we think f of 2.8 is. Now we are going to use this information to show that the actual error, and this is our notation for the actual error, if we do the absolute value of the real answer minus our approximation, that's the actual error. That's exactly how far we are off, is less than 1 eighth. And this is the notation the AP test is going to use to show us that we're probably going to need to use Lagrange error bound. We do not have an alternating series. So our error is going to be less than or equal to the maximum value of the next derivative, which that's what this graph is for. Here is a graph of the next derivative. Now, between 2 and 3 at 2.8, what's the maximum value of this derivative? Well, I know it's at 3 at 2 and it's at 7 at 3. I'm not going to approximate anything less than 7. I mean, how do you know it's 6.9 or 6.8? I'm going to go all the way out here to 3 and use this as my maximum value of my next derivative. So that's going to be 7 times. Now we do 2.8 minus 2 to the 4th. And this is all over 4 factorial. And we'll put an absolute value on it just in case we did 2 minus 2.8 here. That's my Lagrange error bound statement. That's the maximum value of the next derivative 
times the difference between the center and where we approximated it to the next power over the next factorial. We stopped at the cube just so we go to the fourth over four factorial. So that's going to equal, by the way, I, obviously I did this on the calculator, that's going to equal 0.119 which happens to be less than 1 eighth because 1 eighth is 0.125. So there we go. We showed the error using the Lagrange error bound. So that's that, and I will see you guys tomorrow.